Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show, all about movies. You're listening to The Jam Price Show, and today my guest is filmmaker Jesse Dillon, and we're talking about his brand new documentary entitled Sorrows. And welcome to the show, Jesse. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Really, very nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure. I'm very excited to talk about this documentary because George Soros has become so controversial over the last few years. So this documentary kind of, you know, it lets us inside his life and what he's doing and in mm-hmm. looks at the controversies as well. So what made you decide to do a documentary about George Soros? You know, I'd been shooting for his Open Society Foundations for a while, and I I didn't really... It took a long time for me to come up with the idea that I wanted to make a movie, and then it took a couple of years for him to get permission to let me do it. So it took, you know, it just took a long time, and I just felt like people really needed to hear, at least hear his side of the story. Um, Yes. So that's why I made it. So, yeah, you had unprecedented access to him, and Mm -hmm. he is normally a rather um, private man, he is. Him, although he, he has done interviews, um, he's not one who likes to put himself out there in the public eye and likes to let his work speak for themselves. So how did you get mm-hmm. such um, access to him? Well, I think after you interview a person a lot of times, they sort of just, you know, you just you sort of just become wallpaper in the room and they don't think much about it. And that's when you get the best stuff because people are unguarded. And I think George just, he let me, uh, he let me shoot it. So the first time he shot me, he might give me notes and think of stuff. Second time, maybe a little more than the third time. He's like, ah, just do it. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, he, so he did give you notes. That's interesting. <laughs> a little bit. Well, not, little not on the movie. He gave me notes on some of the other things we were working on, you know. I see. I see. Yeah, well, no, so, so, he never even saw ahead. the movie. You know, until after it was already finished and out. Okay, so he had not. He he didn't give you notes on the actual film. So no. For, so for people who you know, I mean, right now because there is all the controversy out there and all of these conspiracy theories, and gosh, he's been you know ranked up there with the devil. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, mm-hmm. and yet this is a man who set out to do good in the world. So talk a little bit about that. Why there is, there's such controversy around George Sor- Soros? And when do you think that began? So those are, that's a two-part question. You know, why and then when? You know, when it began, you know, the thing about George is he hasn't had any, um, he never make he never made forward looking material. So until uh, I wandered along, there wasn't any reason that you would be looking out into the future to see if it was accurate or not. So I think he just got to a point where he wanted to keep doing that and making sure that the things he was doing were really effective. So it, it just, it just gradually took on a greater and greater importance in the release schedule, you know? Uh, and then it started in the eighties with around the time of George Bush. And he just sort of never answered any of the questions of the of the right. And uh, eventually they just made him into a scapegoat and sort of been fighting that ever since. So why do you think that George Soros decided now was the time to have a documentary made about him? I don't I, I, I couldn't. I think that um, that's a super complicated question. I'm not really sure why he would let it go on now, except to say that, um, you know, it's been a long time, you know, and it's like he, he never, nobody ever uh, answered any of the criticisms. He never said anything. So I think that maybe there was just room for, you know, trying to get some of his side of the story out a little bit, you know, trying to understand his origins, understand where he came from, you know, understand that he sort of grew up with Nazis and, you know, all these, these sort of things that, that he had faced earlier in his life, which sort of gave him the perspective on what, you know, he's, he's sort of um, contending with today. You know, he's seen all these kinds of extreme uh, right wing movements and what it leads to before. So I think that maybe he just felt like, um, you know, that was unclear, maybe what his motivations were, and he would just let somebody try and uh, tell the story. And I I just happened to be in the right position to be able to do it. Timing is everything. It is. (laughs) It's always everything. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So so to go back to why do you think he has, you know, you said he didn't answer, you know, a lot of the right wing, you know, the fringe, let's say, uh, Mm -hmm. in the in the 80s, he didn't answer them back then. Um, so why do you think that, is that because he didn't answer it? Is that 
why he became more vilified. So what, you know, why has he become such a controversial, I mean, you either love him or hate him. You're on what, I don't think yeah. there's anybody who may, might be neutral about him, which means he's doing what he should be doing, I guess, in life. You know, if people yeah. are neutral, then you're not doing anything, right? Um, yeah. But why do you, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, I think that I think that um, you know usually people don't really know that much about him, and so mm -hmm. um, autocratic leaders can use him, you know, to to push back against, uh, especially like in Hungary where he's from, you know, they can use him as sort of a uh, you know a, a monster to to get across their own goals, and so I think that he he serves a if it wasn't him, it'd be something else. And, 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 you know, I think also people are uncomfortable with, with people who have unlimited funds. You know, people are uncom uncomfortable with the Koch brothers and George Soros and, and all these kinds of things because they, they worry that their vote might count more than one individual vote, which is, you know, is, is definitely an issue, you know? Yes, I guess the Koch brothers would be the um, opposite end of what George Soros is about, right? They would be the opposite end, but you know the 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 thing is is that and and what he's saying is a little different because the Koch brothers might be saying, "Listen, this is ideologically exactly where we want to get to. This is what we believe about the world." What George is saying is that everybody ha should have the ability to to say something, you know, in in society. You don't necessarily have to agree with them, but everybody has a right to say something. So a lot of his endeavors are are to try and make it so that everybody in society has a has a voice. And that one of the things I found interesting is that he he doesn't get involved in the, you know, he obviously he's given lots of money to lots of different organizations, and we'll talk mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what how he got started in this. But he does he sort of hands off. Mm hmm. Yeah, he doesn't I think that, give them direction. I mean, other than the Koch brothers, my understanding, he was. I just watched an interview with one of the Koch brothers, and I think it was on sixty Minutes, and uh, and they they're more involved. Yeah, I mean, in, in policy. Yeah, I think that's right, and I think that um, you know, it's it's. I think it's these things are complicated, so it just takes a while to. Um, you know, sort of understand where he's coming from in terms of what, uh, you know, he's interested in putting his money in. You know, he, he started with apartheid. You know, he, he generally, I think, what he does is he goes to a place, he make, he has an opinion about, you know, what should happen, and then he tries to find people who he thinks in that local area that he thinks are really good, and then he gives them money, and they decide how it will be spent. And that's the same in Hungary. And that's as it is in the United States, as it is in England, as in, in Germany, in terms of what George uh, puts his funds towards. So he, he, the op he is the Open Society Foundation. That's the basis for what he does. So do you want to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what that is exactly? You know, Open Society Foundation? Well, Open Society Foundation is what it says. You know, it's just what it says, which is a group that um, they're different um Local, there are different organizations in each territory, and their goal is to try and, you know, get people's voices to be heard in those local towns. So you might have a, you know, the Rohingya be able to speak. You might have, um, uh, you might have, uh, uh, you know, different activists in different parts of the world be able to get their voice heard. So I think what he's doing is he's going into those areas and he's saying, like, look, here's a group that we should empower and and support, and then he uses his money and sort of his creative ideas to do that. And he, he was, it, it, which is wonderful. It's a wonderful, to, you know, to, to do it that way. But he was also one of, um, I guess, I mean, one of the, the, he did more to help bring down the Berlin wall than governments did. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, he, he used, um, it's counterintuitive, but just by, uh, you know, I think he was a part of that. And again, he was in the right place at the right time. I don't think he necessarily ever thought he would have that kind of impact, but there was a, a break, you know, there was an opening and, and all that needed to happen for it to be pushed through was to empower the people who were there to make them be able to connect with one another 
um, to support them. Uh, and then those individual groups did all the work. But that's that's really what he did is is, is sort of work um, against uh, the Soviets and and uh, uh, you know by doing simple things like you know creating copy centers where people could exchange. Uh, books and ideas, as strange as it sounds, you couldn't do that before. So the more they were given a piece of freedom, the more they wanted it, and then they did the work. And uh, I think what George did was just empower that by giving them some tools to make it possible. Brilliant. I mean, what he does is absolutely brilliant. But, he, you know, he also, yeah. because of everything that's been out, out there, uh, unfortunately, um, because everything, the conspiracy theories now, I mean, it's just Rampant, and I guess because of social yeah. media, you know, it's more rampant than ever, and it's going to probably continue to be that way. But um, he did express um, that he has gotten depressed by that. Do you want to delve into that a little deeper? Well, I think it's it's hard. You know, he's given away, you know, billions and billions of dollars um, with the idea of, you know, making the world a better place and, and uh, you know, I, a lot of people hate him for doing that. So it's a very strange, it's a very strange place to be, you know, is that, um, you're, you're, you know, endeavoring to do something that's really hard. If it wasn't hard, it would already be done. And, and yet, uh, people are not very responsive, you know, so, so he's got to be careful, have security and, and, uh, and, you know, I think he wakes up every day trying to see how he can sort of keep working on these things he works on, but, I think it is tough. I don't think it makes them happy. I also think that the um, the world is going into a darker place right now. So, you know, you can look back and wonder whether any of his efforts, he, he could look, peer back and, and wonder whether his efforts have been successful. Now, I would say to you that I think they definitely have. You know, part of that that's not in the movie is all the scholarship. You, you had to pick the things you could focus on. But, you know, he's given away thousands and thousands of scholarships for people to go to college. And um, that has raised, you know, thousands and thousands of people out of poverty, families, you know, gotten them going in a different different direction. So I think if you measure what's good about what he's done, it's undoubtedly he's on the right side of the line, you know, and done a lot of work to support things. And is, is um, uh, for me, I felt like he deserved a lot of respect for doing that. I, I totally 100% agree. There's no question about it. Did, did he, and I don't know, I can't remember if this was in there, did, were there, were there things where he, um, invested his money and mm-hmm. then found out that he had regrets about perhaps, um, investing his money in certain causes because it really wasn't in alignment with what his values and belief systems are? Well, I think that if you're investing money um, so there's investing money to make money. Like you're going to, you know, he would buy, uh, currencies and then bet on which way the currency was going to go. And that's like a, that's like a straight investment. And then there's an investment in people for, for, um, what would be called an open society. And, you know, you, you can't say that you support investing people. And then if those people don't do exactly what you want them to do, that does not mean that you failed. You know, Victor Orban, the man who runs uh, Hungary, George Soros paid for his college, right? So had he known that he was going to be his mortal foe, I don't think he would have done that. But I'm not sure George would look at that as any sort of sense of failure in particular. Um, it just sort of these things don't work out exactly the way you might want them to. And, and I think that that's, that's because change is really hard, you know, and 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 not easy to understand where it's going or what it's doing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's true too. So it, yeah, that would, that, that is interesting that he helped pay for the education of yeah. what the, like leader a slap of in the face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, interesting. And, and he was fully aware of it. <laughs> that George Charles well, he was, when he was, when he was, uh, um, the foundation was much smaller than, and I don't think he was aware that that guy didn't like him. You know, but but I don't think it would surprise him. You know, open society, all open society means in George's view is that people should have the opportunity to be able to say stuff. It does not mean that George necessarily agrees with them. You know, 
yeah, and that's what it's about. A, you know, yeah. good debate, you know, that there's a debate yeah. going on and it's open society and that you can have a good debate that goes on yeah. well, during that. So what was the most surprising thing that you discovered when you were putting this documentary together about George Soros? And you know, the foundation? reason I thought the, the, the reason that I thought it was important to do was that, um, you know, I did not really understand this distinction. I'd worked for a lot of philanthropists and usually uh, most of them would always say, well, I want to do this particular thing. And it was very, you know, they, they had a vested interest in the success. He was the first person that I worked for who said, no, it actually isn't about what I think it's about what these local people think and about empowering them. And that is a, a very, very powerful idea for, for change. And, you know, what I took from that is that, we all as individuals can make decisions in our own life about what we want to do. Maybe we can't do things necessarily that big, but we can do, we can do something and we all should do something. So I, that, I, I found the story to be very empowering. It, it, yes, it definitely is very empowering. I mean, that's why I do what I do to give a voice to filmmakers so they can talk about, you know, their passion and uh, yeah. getting uh, the word well, you've out. Done that very, uh, you've done that very effectively, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, more to be done. <laughs> more to yeah. be done. But, you know, you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, that's why I, yeah, I mean, I, and I do choose films and I'm very honest about that, that, you know, are near and dear to my heart, obviously. So yeah. this movie was, and I know we, you, we had a hard time scheduling you for this interview, but it was one that I didn't want to let go because it was, a, I felt very important well, film that people should be seeing, uh, well, because thank you of everything. For that. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, I, and I mean it too, uh, because this is, yeah, he's, he's a fascinating man and, uh, yeah. you, uh, yeah, and the, and again, it goes back to all all we're hearing now through the the noise yeah. is all the negativity about him, and you know, and I felt I think what you're doing right now, and I think the timing is perfect, is coming out and really showing who this man truly is and what he's about. He's 90 years old now. Yeah. Um. And and you interviewed his four children. It's four children, I believe, right? Yeah. Three sons and a yeah. daughter. So are yeah. they actively involved in his philanthropy or are they doing other things? So, well, you know, they're a very wealthy family. So a lot, they work on the, um, they work on the, um, they, they work on some of the things with them together. And then they also work on their own things. They, they're all interesting people in their own right. So they have a lot, they have a lot going on, you know? Um, you know, I think they'll probably carry on the tradition. I think that, you know, George is, you know, I think that's an interesting question. What happens to the foundation when George is, you know, not around anymore? I don't know. Does he have a plan? Do you know? Did he, was that discussed at all? You know, he, I know he, 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 it's a little, you know, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't get into that so much, but, um, uh, I know there is some plan to continue it, um, and uh, you know it's. I hope it does continue because there's a lot of institutions I think that are are really that rely on it that are really important. You know, Human Rights Watch, ACLU, Planned Parenthood, just to name a few in the United States. Um, uh, and these are important institutions for all of us. So, you know, they they. Uh, you know, they, they hold the line for us in lots of ways uh, to get underserved populations to be able to have a voice and be able to stand up for themselves. So, uh, you know, I, I hope that'll continue for a long time. And and even if it wasn't to continue, we all have a responsibility to continue with those institutions. So, you know, we got to keep the work going. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes when you, when you, when, when you looked at this film, especially at the end, when you kind of list all the different organizations that he has um, given money to throughout his uh, career, uh, you kind of go, everything just seems insurmountable. There's so many issues going on all yeah. everywhere. And I don't know if it's getting worse. Or is it just because we're we're seeing it more because we're all yeah. home and we're we're observing these things more, or whether the world is just starting to collapse. I mean, it feels that way sometimes, and especially with COVID. Well, and, and 
go ahead. I, I'm gonna, I, I do. I want to talk to you because I saw that you're doing something with COVID-19. You, you've done something mm-hmm. with an analytics platform and a navigator tool. So I want to mm-hmm. talk to you about that, but also about the insurmountable problems in the world. So that's the, the two-part question. Do you feel well, that way too? Or? I do on occasion, but I, I think the thing is, is there's no, there's no other thing we can do except to try. And, and, um, you know, because you can't give in to, to hopelessness. And I think we do see it, see that, um, when we look around. Um, and I, I do see that, um, you know, and, and it's like, you know, I think that it's like, but like I said about George is that we can all do stuff like, you know, you're talking about the COVID navigator and some of the technologies we've developed at, at my company to help, um, with um, how we look at data statistics, how we how we think about data, and how it can help us um, push ourselves to a more just and equal world, you know, those I think those things are all out there, and it's just incumbent upon us to push forward and find a way to do it. You know, they, with a revolution in digital technologies, there's so many opportunities for filmmakers, and you know, one of the one of my laments is like at my little company is that I'm always having trouble finding filmmakers who are willing to think in this other way, but, but it's wide open. You know, all the tools are always changing. It just, sometimes it's hard to get the artists interested in these, these new mediums that are out there. So we, we, we do have to just keep trying and keep, you know, sort of focusing on, on how to do good things. You know, I think that's important. I agree. I agree. I guess if we yeah. just keep the, you know, each of us do our, our try to do something good every day and, or just yeah. be at that force, we just, whether it's just a smile, giving somebody a smile. Well, of course, nowadays with the mask, we can't smile people as people. Yeah. Well, you do with your eyes. You can't tell. You do it with your eyes yeah. and you can say hello and acknowledge yeah. them. I don't want to let go, this go, our interview go too far because you've worked, you've worked with some really interesting people, but you want an Emmy award for Barack Obama's mm-hmm. Yes We Can video. I and did worked, win an Emmy that, yeah. Barack Obama, you've worked with the Clinton Global Initiative. You've also worked with the Biden uh, Cancer Fierce Program. So t- yeah. now that we've got you know Biden coming into the office and Barack Obama is everywhere, like right now, every, yeah. every time yeah. you turn on TV, you've got another interview going on. What was that like for you? That was 2008 when you worked on that video. Well, the, the, the Yes We Can video, you know, it was... It was um, you know, it was it was enjoyable working on it, and you know, with um, mo- most of these people I work with on things that you know, it's like they're not necessarily political, you know. Although I would say that you know I'm a Democrat, obviously, but but uh, uh, you know, the idea is to help people. So you know, there you're talking about a lot of the political people that I've worked with, but you know, I've worked with a lot, you know, lots and lots of other kinds of people because yes, you, have. you know, change yes, doesn't the change doesn't necessarily always happen with. Um, in politics that happens in other other places and i'm always just trying to be with um storytellers who are trying to you know like people who are trying to do something that's really hard and they can use um some of these other kinds of story uh telling skills to to help them accomplish a goal so like with biden you know i worked with him on um on uh, his cancer initiatives for a long time uh which i hope he'll continue because when COVID is gone we still got this cancer thing we all got to fight, you know? So, so I think that it's like, how do we keep going towards the progressive future? And what does that mean? You know, um, uh, you know, I think that's, it's really the critical thing, you know, just to keep focused on that. Keep our eyes above the horizon. Exactly. Well, Jesse, keep yeah. doing what you're doing and focusing the light on, on these issues. And where can yeah. people see Soros right now? I'm not sure where you can see it in the United States yet, um, but it'll be out here. Just, just look for it. It's just called Soros, and it's out. And and uh, you know, I, I I think it'd be great, great to great to see it when it's out in the United States. Great. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure thank talking you. with you. and I look forward to having you back on the show with your next project. Please. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. You can listen to The Jam Price Show whenever and wherever at thejampriceshow.com and on the iHeart Podcast Network, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and my YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Jam Price Show. And you can go on Facebook to The Jam Price Show. Please like us when you're there. Thank you for listening. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show, all about movies. 